Well, not many people I know, and probably you as well, have gone off and bought an ancient ruined village in the French Alps. <laughs> so I want to ask my guest Dudley Ward why he and his wife would do such an unusual thing. And then I want to talk with him as he helps us tackle an, an old theological issue regarding how much is God's choice and how much is our choice when it comes to our eternal salvation. Very nice. A controversial topic that he writes about in his book, Programmed by God or free to choose. Let's meet Dudley Ward. Welcome, Dudley. Thank you, Ron. <laughs> Great to have you here. here. Well, first of all, we've got to jump into this, uh, this question because mm. when I heard of what you've done mm -hmm. a number of years ago, mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, very unusual. You, you bought this, these ruins of an ancient village uh, in the French Alps. Mm. What's that all about? Well, we were serving in a town close by and the local priest who loved to talk English came to tea and saw our lounge littered with sleeping bags. Who are these people? These are um, hitchhikers and dropouts. I'm teaching them the Bible. Oh, this is wonderful, he said. You have a ministry. But I think he'd been tipped off and in the apartment we'd been disturbing the neighborhood. And <laughs> I didn't realize it at the time, but he took me onto the balcony, pointed over the mountain there and said, I think God has got something for you behind that mountain. There's a little village called Entrepierre. He sowed the thought and we laughed. We were poorer than church mice. We hadn't a penny to our name, but <laughs> the Lord worked on my life. Mm -hmm. As I couldn't sleep one night, the pious would call it a night of prayer. To me, it was a disturbed night. Try and sleep, can't sleep, put the light on, read a verse of scripture, pray, light off, light on again. God was working in my heart and I went out to the ruined village and then I had a vision from God of this village brought back to life. I knew nothing about building work, Ron, at the time. And then mm. off down into the meadows and having another vision of them being filled with campers, young people uh, coming and hearing about Christ. And it all came to pass. And when I shared it with my wife, Jill, yeah. who was ill at the time with kidney problems, she groaned. She was still in bed. What do I do? What is this husband talking about? <laughs> Our front door closes and locks. We've no broken windows. The roof doesn't leak. And he wants me to move out into this ruined village. And in despair, she let the Bible fall open in her hands. And it fell open at Isaiah chapter 58. And verse 12 was illuminated. It leapt out of the page. Those from among you will rebuild the ancient ruins. You will mm. be called a restorer of streets to dwell in and a repairer of houses depending on the way you translate it. And this grabbed her and she thought, wow, this is wonderful. She read the whole chapter. And then verse 8 was illuminated. Um, 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 and your healing shall spring forth speedily. A hope mm. for healing. And she was healed. Wow. Despite the doctor's predictions, she's never had any further problem. What a great uh, scripture verse <laughs> to jump off the, up the Bible pages Ruined. for you in, yes. in that particular instance, because so, it was an actual ruined village. How, how old of a village was well, it? Well, uh, it's mentioned in the archives, Ron, in 1040 AD, but we know that it goes back further than that. I have a 9th century stone staircase in one of the guest accommodations, mm. which we're not allowed to touch. It's an archaeological vestige. And so, yes, but... Um, um, to know the configuration of the village and what was exactly there, we can't know now because at the French Revolution in 1790, a lot of uh, archives were burnt, mm. were destroyed, but it's a thousand years old. So then you, you, brought, you, you went there, you brought help, you know, probably a lot of people came and yes, gave of their time. And, and uh, so we have a, a photo of what it looks like today. Let's, let's yes. have a peek. Look yes. at that gorgeous, uh, right in the French Alps, and, uh, and it, you still call it Entrepierre? Entrepierre. Which means? Between the rocks. Okay. It's between two mountain peaks. And so, and there's some, some of the helpers that, yes. that came and... Yes, uh, lots of help, helped. hundreds of people. Now we have Bruce Wastel's brother, Dave, in this picture. Yeah, Bruce works here Frenchmen. with us, and Dave years ago used to work uh, with us at Crossroads. Yes. And two Frenchmen there. Dave's learning how to cope with working with French oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So then tell us then what it's being used for today. What, what yes. was the, the vision well, and for many years now? For many years it was a free-for-all. Anyone could come and stay freely. Dropouts, people for whatever reason, curious Christians, those looking for a cheap 
place to stay. But then missionaries heard about it and um, began to come in numbers until we realized their needs were paramount and we focused down on just the needs of Christian workers. Many missionaries. Missionaries to and France. national pastors. Mm. And now that is our unique focus. We're five mm. professional couples. Our son directs the work. And um, there's a tremendous demand for mm. this, and we're mm. very busy. A uh, beautiful haven of rest there for yes. many, and for healing, and for just for healing. many who are, are having yes. a difficult time. Uh, France, I, I'm sure, is not a very uh, easy place to be a Christian worker. You are right, Ron. Ron, it's a very difficult place. Mm -hmm. um, the contrast with Canada is flagrant. In Canada here, I'll talk on the streets and the shops with people, never do I have to argue for the existence of God. But in France, that's where you have to begin. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, ins the incidence of results is often very, very low. And so there's an easy uh, temptation there for burnout, depression, wanting to give up. And we're there mm -hmm. to help renew their passion for ministry and to recover from those bouts of right. burnout. Mm. Now, uh, Dudley, uh, we pray that, that God will continue to bless this ministry and as he continues to, to heal many who, who yes. have need of that, yes. that particular place. Yes, thank uh, you. But I want to transition a bit because you, you've written a book and I, you know, I would have thought given this unusual experience uh, of, of what you've done in the French Alps uh, that maybe the book would have been all about that and all about you and your experiences. But there is a, a particular subject on your heart that you felt important to tackle. So t tell us about why this particular book, Programmed by God or Free to Choose? Well, I did have a, a, a short article published when I was 17 and uh, hoped I could write, but um, organizing the rebuilding of this village has taken all my energy and time. But uh, the missionary with whom I stayed in, in France initially and through whom God spoke to me and with whom I became associated, um, had besetting sins, it got to the point where he persuaded himself that he couldn't live a full victory over them because he hadn't in fact ever be become part of the elect. He had not been predestined to eternal life and stopped eating, stopped exercising, stopped drinking and was dead within a few weeks. And, and this was uh, very uh, difficult for us all to mm. watch happening. And in my heart I said, one day I will address this problem. So it was a particular theological persuasion he had locked in his mind and locked he felt that, that he just didn't have any hope. And our very famous and dear um, uh, preacher, Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones from Wales, visited my friend Len and tried to help him and couldn't help him. I thought this is a very deep-seated problem. Mm. And of course my book addresses this problem 